the chicks is thicker uh -huh. Reppin' for the team, that's the bitch in Houston sipper uh -huh. She don't want your liquor, she don't want your chipper She poppin' for a legend, that's a real massa flipper uh -huh. this, this is for la raza, yeah. this is for la raza yeah. I'm in my trap, guys I whippin' up the damn massa all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. It's your host, Chingo Blingo with the Big Tamarindo. And we have... <laughs> and Marisol is uh, imp impersonating our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Little Bam Bam inside. We have What's Marisol. up, everyone? We have producer Rob What's in the up, building. everyone? How are you? We got my homie Frank Lopez, a.k.a. Compound Films, <laughs> joining us today. Compound. Burr, 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 burr. Hey, if I connected a soundboard, would you want to use it? Like sound be effects. one of those shows where we just like drop totally. all the sound effects. Totally. Yeah. That's why yeah. I just yeah. make a sound effect. Uh, get a sound effect where they drop cash though. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, so my boy Frank, uh, man, speaking of cash, I was asking him yesterday about Bitcoin because he one of the most techiest singularity AI type of motherfuckers I know, even mm -hmm. though he's from the hood. Mm -hmm. So when I met him, he it was all Air Force Ones. It was all like Versace Lokes. Now look at them. Fitted hats. And now, hey, you, you made my uh you made the babysitter nervous, bro, because you had the suit on. She was like, <laughs> she was like, hey, que este wey, que no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Este wey so es importante. <laughs> like shit, I should have cleaned up. This motherfucker <laughs> got a suit. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that's you know, people look at you different, man. But I, I wanted to set something off real quick and I okay. think it's pretty interesting. I was I was riding up up here, right? Mm -hmm. And um, of course, today's September 11th. Oh, right, right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Very sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like nobody's ever said it. And I, and uh -oh. I wanted to say like... So what uh, you finna say, man? <laughs> I, 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 on the radio, uh, they were on 97. They're like, yeah, think back. Where were you when this happened? Oh, they're trying to like, yeah, I feel you. And, you? I, and I was right. And I was like, okay, where was I? I was like in school. And, I, and I'm like, well, how did I feel about it? Like, I remember looking around like, anybody... Can I curse on you? Yeah. Like, I remember like, man, nobody really gave a fuck. Like, uh, y'all felt like it was so far away, or y'all didn't, y'all were too young to understand. Uh, it was almost like, it was almost like, yeah, we see this shit on TV and people are dying, but the people dying in that building don't look like us out here. Like, this is, it's almost like when you're, you're you know, when you're in the hood and shit, that's like, all you know. Like, detached from, you need to put the mic closer to your mouth. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there you go. Yeah, like, when you're, when you're from the hood, like, you don't care about anything outside of that. Like, that's why with politics is like, yo, whatever oh. y'all do, it's not gonna affect us. Every, we're still gonna be, you know, trying to pump gas and shit. Like, y'all really talking that, like y'all just going <clears> to <throat> change shit, but it's not. Well, that's interesting because, not to get too political, that's interesting because um, a lot, what is it called? Voter apathy? Or what is it? Like, when you just, people are just like, hey, man, it's all a charade. Mm. The shit's rigged. Either way, it doesn't really affect us. Or we're fucked either way. Mm -hmm. Recession or no recession. Uh, regardless of, like, what they might say on TV. Like, uh, unemployment is low or whatever. Um, but uh, you know, but I just wanted to to kind of like put that out there is that you know you'll get a day like if a hundred people died right, but let a hundred people in Chicago die, them boys don't get no day. Like it's it's just like well yeah they look at that different. So it's like okay we look at that almost like how y'all look at us. It's like well I mean what you want me to do? Like cry about a hundred people gone. Meanwhile this is what we see every day. Mm. How am I supposed to be sad and upset over something we see all desensitized, the time? Desensitized, I think he's what but he's the saying. Difference, I'm trying to I save think, it. Wait, but <laughs> so I we think, don't lose all our New York listeners like this <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> disrespect. Well, I think the difference also is a hundred people die in Chicago. It's not necessarily because of a terrorist yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. This was a little bit different. Right. I mean, we're talking about airplanes going through a damn building. It's like surreal. It's like, I, what the fuck? I, speaking of where were you, I had just moved back from College Station and I was going to U of H. And I remember I was, I turned on the TV and I was like, what movie is this? Wow. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Cause the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is watch Good Morning America. And that was my kind of thing. But the news, our local news had interrupted it. And so I was like, they really interrupted Good Morning America for this movie? What is this movie? It was like that. I was like, CGI. Looking. Then I changed it. I was like, oh shit, it's on every channel. What's going on? I finally stopped. And it was like, as I was changing it, that's when I saw the, second airplane hit and i was like oh shit watch the movie like vice legit, bro watch the movie oh, vice yes, i haven't seen it watch the movie vice <laughs> it's the craziest thing ever and it's so sad i guess my thing the the one thing i hate the most is um that the news 
plays it all over again and again and again. And for people who are trying to 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 overcome that trauma, to overcome losing their loved one, it's a it's a reminder every nine eleven. You don't think they're reminded of it every day? Mm. And then here you go and dedicate a whole. I get it. I get it. Like you, let's honor the people who who uh f- you know who went in there and tried to save people. Let's uh, let's honor and, the people and, who passed. And let's also never forget, right? Right. Isn't exactly. Totally. Reason? Like I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is, it's like no one wants to keep watching images of people jumping out the window trying to save their life. It's like, do I run down the stairs to escape this, or do I jump out the or window, do I burn up? or do yeah. I burn up? You know, it's like who wants to keep i don't know whenever i hate that stuff or when a hurricane happens and they just keep playing those images yeah. of i can't imagine like, what bro. i can't imagine what those people were feeling or going through when it's like you know a big ass roaring fire going on like right yeah. upon you and then the other side you know like to your right there's a fire to your left there's a window yeah. <laughs> and like how you know what i'm saying like do you throw something through it like Ooh, those I, are some fucked up decisions. Yeah, I do want to polish up what I said though. Uh, at the same time, too, when when we're watching it on TV, this is Frank Lopez. This <laughs> is Frank Lopez. When you're watching it on TV, on the almost, north side at Compound Foods, you almost think like as a kid, like Yo, follow him. I'm at this weak ass <laughs> high school or middle school, whatever it was. Like I'm never gonna go to New York. Like I'm never gonna meet a New Yorker. I'm never gonna be over there. And I guess there is a disconnection. It's like, well, this is and maybe, you in what grade? I was like in, I don't remember. I was just, I'd say. I, I don't even remember. How old High school or middle school? It was like, I was young. I, I don't remember what grade what, I was. What year did you uh, graduate from uh, Class of 04, but this was like. Okay. I was 08, so yeah, I was in was like pro- seventh grade. So you Oh, so like, you were tiny, like fifth like grade? I was a kid. I was a kid. No, he's older. You were in high school. Oh, okay. My bad. Numbers. So, <laughs> uh, so you'd be like ninth <laughs> grade. Not high school. Yeah, ninth grade. Yeah, his ninth frontal grade lobe, his frontal lobe and his brain weren't fully formed Frontal yet, cortex. So, yeah. Um, I, I referenced the movie Vice. And I want to go back and before I, I'm off on my history details, but the fucked up thing about it, number one, the never forget thing, we saw, what's his name, John Stewart? Mm-hmm. He went in front of, I believe, Congress yeah. or something where he was like, hey, we were supposed to have this fund oh, for the firefighters. so that we would never forget the first responders that are dying of lung diseases mm-hmm. and cancers and asbestos and all this stuff. Asbestos. Y'all motherfuckers forgot, basically. He was like, y'all said y'all would never forget. And y'all forgot. Yeah. So find the fucking money yeah. before you get to promising people shit. And then in the movie Vice, if I'm not mistaken, what happened was you had Dick Cheney running shit. And then you had George Bush, who was the president. Yeah. And um, what happened was um, a terrorist cell, you know, Osama bin Laden uh, took credit. He was like, yeah, we did that shit. Supposedly, they already had clues and people were like, hey, like, I don't know if the CIA was like, hey, man, they talking about according to the data or whatever. Anyway, the event happens. We all know the image of, of Bush was at a school reading mm-hmm. and they came to tell him, <laughs> right? Well, what happened after that? This is where my details get a little iffy. What happened after that is Osama bin Laden is operating. Um, what, what's, what was his little click? His little gang, uh, Al Qaeda, mm-hmm. Al Qaeda, right? Thugs. Out of Afghanistan, he was dropping video mixtapes out of a cave <laughs> with the uh, breathing machine and shit. Okay, nobody could find him. All right. Soon thereafter, <laughs> we invade Iraq. Yeah. And from what I recall in the movie, they were like, the American people don't understand what a terrorist cell is. We can't just say we're going after Al Qaeda. They're like, what country is Al Qaeda? It's not a country. It's it's a starfish. It's not a spider. It's mm-hmm. like a bunch of radicalized extremists who are all on the same mission. Basically, go do some damage and you're going you gonna to get rewarded in the afterlife. It's the, so now, in the movie, what happened was is they were like, how are we going to invade Iraq if it was uh, Al-Qaeda mm-hmm. over here in Afghanistan, uh, the tall guy, uh, Bin Laden? Supposedly, they were like, Hey, well, we just got this uh, this report or this snitch or a drone caught of image of this one cat who's from this one country who happened to live in Iraq for about six months. He has ties to Iraq. We could say that, right? And then he somehow he somehow had a meeting in Afghanistan in a cave with Bin Laden. Can now can we invade Iraq? And then Tyler Perry's character he had to go read a thing like we have this guy's name and there's a connection and we believe he has weapons of mass destruction. And next thing you know, 
you know, the dad, Bush Sr., had already started Desert Storm. Now we have, I guess, the Gulf War. So now you have generations of people who's like, oh, my dad served the Desert Storm. Now you got the 18-year-old son. We still out there. And then ne- next thing you know, Halliburton stock goes up 500%, and then mm-hmm. we take all the oil. I'll tell you so like this. that's the fucked up part I of wonder how this many, tragedy. I wonder how many men in the military, right, just kind of are watching and thinking, why are we here? What's my like purpose? What? Like, and why am I watching su- this podcast? And, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy in this suit disrespecting? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, shield. every, like, are they, like, kind of sitting back, like, fuck, I'm away from my family. There's oh, no bet. purpose of me being here. What are we fighting for exactly? Hold on. Let me finish my mm-hmm. thought. And um, I don't get to see my kids go to school every morning. I don't, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and then something just goes off in their head and it's like, I want to get out, but they can't because they signed a six year yeah. or a four year, whatever it is. So. And it's like, well, uh, yeah, it looks like you're stuck here. Otherwise you, you know, I, get a I, dishonorable I, discharge. I'll say I, I, that I learned, is the opinion of Marisol Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have the last name. No, notice that, uh, right? What was my last name? Hey, before we get all the uh, soldiers sending hate mail, like, I don't appreciate how y'all said my mission is pointless. That's not what we said. No, no, no. That's we not what said, I said. We said when you get homesick and like, you miss your that, girl. Is that what you're thinking? Like, I'm curious. Is that what the thoughts Put that go through your head? Yeah, right. Well, Sorry. How about we start right here? <laughs> we First of all, we started with 9-11. <laughs> so what okay. were you saying, Frank? I, yeah. I, I'll say, man, I learned a lot from this, you know, and, and I, I, I mean, you know, if I were to become president, I, I think I know how to win. <laughs> I was like, this wow. five-minute conversation? Are you about or? to go public? <laughs> I, I, I think I know how to win. This just in. This just in. You know, what I would do, man, to fight terrorism them out there i'd send in you know rap a lot me and jay prince gonna be on the phone and we're gonna work this stuff out with al-qaeda jay prince would take care of it and we're gonna make it happen you know yeah the tall guy in the cave (laughs) with the breathing machine let this be i can't i can't promise health care but i I promise that i'm gonna have them boys stop breaking into your car and your houses in the hood and shit yeah Yeah. all that all that's getting cut out anybody chain getting snatched (laughs) all that's getting cut out baby mom's gonna be way calm you know they're, they're going to get free purses every month. <laughs> We're going to calm them down. You know? And, and, and a good month. way to tie this all, tie this all together, uh, Have you? Ch- uh, you, I don't know if you checked out Jay Prince's book. No. Respect. Have you heard the audio book, Jay <laughs> Prince? No. Okay. Well, to tie it all together, there, uh, there was a chapter where Jay Prince donated to his church, right? This church was is very big and it has a lot of um uh, basically a lot of a lot of Democrats like to go there like uh Al Gore went there to try and go speak and meet the people to get some votes right yeah. they like to tap into the Pander, community yeah. tap into the community especially the Democrats especially so Al Gore was there Jay Prince was invited with his wife and um, oh, yeah, yeah. he felt like a lot of these Secret Service people or these extra people were really focusing in on him mm-hmm. heavily. Maybe it's because he's a donor to the church. Long story short, he didn't feel comfortable. They they were like, hey, aren't you going to take a picture with Al Gore? He's like, nah, I'm cool. I don't even really like in the book he says it. What happened was Ross Perot from Dallas, billionaire, who was running at the time and I think was going to go head to head against Al Gore. He Ross Perot has ties to the Dallas Morning News. He kind of wanted a story planet that somehow... As we need a picture of Al Gore and Jay Prince together mm-hmm. so that this rumor that they made up of <clears throat> Jay Prince gave Al Gore half a million dollars uh, to help f- like for the campaign, campaign, campaign for yeah. the campaign and so on and so forth. And um, it's crazy how somebody like Ross Perot or someone with a lot of influence could just plan the story in the newspaper. You would think, oh, mm-hmm. some shit that I read in the paper. Maybe that only happens like at a smaller local level. But uh, I don't know if they got in trouble for that shit. But it's that's kind of crazy if you think about it. Like, mm-hmm. like you know what I mean? Like, if I'm running against somebody, I could just try and tie them in and make up this thing that he gave him half a million dollars. And I heard that rumor and I believed it. Mm. I was like, yo, it makes sense to me. Jay mm. Prince got bread. Why wouldn't he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, now the president down with the mob. Yeah, <laughs> mob time. Yeah, but on a lighter note, today Penny turns one year, two months. <laughs> a year and two months. Yeah, on a light. Thank yeah, you, Penny, uh, Valentina. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thanks. Get our sound effects budget yeah. up right yeah. now. Yeah, right. yeah don't worry about right that. Now. You know, once we get less political, we're going to have more sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, we're going to touch the show for a while. But um, 
but we did we did touch this uh, uh, the nine eleven thing on another episode. We have done that, yeah. Where yeah. I where I mentioned how I was on my way to work at the time. It was at Citibank, and it was a big place where they had like a call center and all that type of stuff. And some people were like, "This is kind of like a federal building, right? Because it's FDIC insured and it's federal and it's really big." People started getting scared because they're watching the buildings, you know. Um, and the crazy thing is, I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but the building around the corner fell too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Building seven. Oh right, right. Oh, Im- imploded. Right no, building seven just yeah <laughs> imploded, and it's like once I <laughs> I was there, I was at uh I was at work, and uh, a lot of the ladies were panicking because a lot of their husbands and boyfriends or family members were in the military yeah. it's san antonio it's like a ton of military people yeah. so they were like oh shit we're gonna retaliate are we going to war is you know is the husband gonna get shipped off are the kids gonna be like dad's leaving like an amazon order you know shipped that. off for real um <laughs> I, I do i do want to touch on some subject uh I, i'm so scared of uh of um of what frank of gonna say, gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, bitcoin no no, no, no i just wanted to say uh so you, you know uh, i know that you got a lot of comedy stuff like, how do you, uh, are you excited about these new things that you got coming up? Like, uh, oh, that's a like, great what, segue. Thank you. Good Frank, segue. Frank, oh, a great segue. Frank. Meanwhile, I'm pulling up like a study that a school just did recently, but never, forget it, forget <laughs> yeah, it. It's yeah. all good. They're going Moving down on. the wormhole and Moving shit. On. Look into it. Well, well, that, well. That, to, and, 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 uh, and crisis to, actors. Listen, no, but to incorporate both, right? We're speaking of 9 11 and then your transition okay. or your comedy, yeah. what you're bringing up. You, you're not a comic who speaks on these things, too. Not really. Not yeah. Yet. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Not really. <laughs> um, so you were saying what excited. exciting things? What are you excited about with this comedy stuff? Okay. Coming? Well, I just made five years. Um, five years. Really. Right? Congratulations. Congratulations. My first show. My first show uh, I was on August 15th. Uh, Frank, where was that place over there by Rice um, University? Um, it was an upstairs. You were bamboo. with Frank. Bamboo. Right? You did yeah, a show yeah. with Frank. Frank put the show yeah. together and uh, he had a whole lineup and I was like, man, I just want some stage time. It was called Bamboo. Oh yeah, Bamboo. And and uh, Marisol's friend Yaneth went and, you know. I thought sp- that was at the improv, babe. No? Was she filmed? Yeah. That was my first show ever ah. is what she filmed. So I met um, some of the guys from Corpus. Javi wasn't there. I met Jacob and oh, Andy. Oh, that day and andy told me dude it's your comedy birthday brother like remember (laughs) this day welcome to the game and i was like i don't know what i'm getting myself into and um anyway so yaneth was filming and you're not supposed to film she filmed it (laughs) and you're not supposed to show the whole thing she's horrible first time up really and she shows it to my girl my girlfriend at the time i I wasn't your girlfriend yet babe I think we were just dating. In my oh, mind, you. My, what's the difference? Shit. <laughs> what's the difference? If I'm dating you, <laughs> we go mind. together. <laughs> what she's trying to say is she was still seeing other people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, I was still dun. swiping. I was still swiping right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, let's no. go back to 9/11. She's still going no. through comments at the time. <laughs> the truth she's comes still, out. She still comments. had booking in bio. <laughs> <laughs> All that got cut out. <laughs> No, no. All that got cut out. <laughs> no, we were dating. We were super new, like uh, super duper new, like yeah. a week in. No, a week? Really? Well, like officially. officially. I was hollering. We weren't hollering. married. How about that? Yeah. We weren't okay. married okay. yet. Okay. And uh, we hadn't had the incident where at my birthday, it was at a club, <laughs> Fox and Hound, and Mighty Soul was helping my sisters decorate my birthday. If you are a girl Sign and you helping you. my sisters decorate <laughs> my birthday, <laughs> We go together. <laughs> so she she was like, oh, by the way, the bartender dude or whoever was like, hey, who you here with? What's going on? What you about? You know, what you drink? This and that. What it do? And she and I'm like, OK, so what you tell him? She was like, I don't. He was like, are you with Chingo? And she was like, well, I mean, we talking, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if we, we together. That was my way of saying like, so are you my boyfriend or are you not? I'm not used to just He's asking. Like, we still, you still we get asked? Together. Like, I didn't know I'm people like, still asked. What? Ask you? I'm just supposed to assume. You can't assume you're just exclusive to someone, right? No, absolutely In not. In my right? mind, it had an exclusive vibe. Would you do things to kind of almost like send the signal like, Almost like a nudge. Like, would you do No, like? I was actually, he, I was, I'm not, a, I'm not the aggressive type. So. Really? <laughs> not, Man. not in the dating, not in the dating game. I'm more like, uh, 
shit, he ain't calling me. It looks like he ain't interested. So why am I going to call Damn. him type of thing, you know? So it was kind of like I would not saying I would wait around for him. But if he didn't text me, I wasn't texting um, him. F- OK, for one, you know, I was a little rusty. You know, I have been out of the game. Number one. Uh, <laughs> two, you know, I was in a semi long relationship prior to that. And then three, I'm not that smart and good when it comes to like <laughs> social cues. I might be on the spectrum. Uh, uh, my social cue, I don't know what, what I got. Asperger's? Yeah. I, was <laughs> I don't know what the come. fuck I got. Asperger's. Asperger's. <laughs> no, the Asperger's. I, I might be on the spectrum. I don't know. But I just kind of assumed that we went together. And I was just like, what do you mean you ain't say that's my man because I'm decorating his birthday party. But were you surprised when, when he finally said it or were you like, I, oh, yeah. oh, okay. I was like, no, 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 okay. we go together. I was like, oh, okay, we do. Okay, cool. I just wanted to like yeah. make that yeah, clear. Nip that. <laughs> yeah, let's nip it. <laughs> let's make it clear so nip that I know <laughs> if I need to delete all these other not <laughs> <left. Yeah. laughs> Shit. For, things know. get weird when Frank's around. We need to have him over more often. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, we well bu- that's let's... because Frank, I, I met, I, Frank's been in the very beginning of the relationship too. So I met yeah. him early yeah. on. Doing boxing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, that is, you going to piece him up? Uh-huh. That's what everybody says. Because we were says. doing like the boxing thing in the, uh, in the park. I'm mm-hmm. like, the mitts. Take that oh, boy's yeah, head off. I, I actually did the training for Like we mm-hmm. did the whole thing. So she was my boot camp instructor slash, you know, boot party, party decorator. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I <laughs> started buffing up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then my mother was born. And you my know. mother was born. My, we got the my mother wig back. Oh, nice. So, I ordered a new one. Do, do you ever, do you, do you ever like, uh, does it ever get to the point where. Grab that mic. I'm sorry. Uh, do you ever, do you ever get, <laughs> sorry. Do you ever get to the point? Grab that mic. <laughs> do you ever get to that point where like Pause. sometimes you'll take, like you'll step back and be like, like that's crazy. Like, you know, like this is some chingo stuff. What? Like you ever just take a step back and be like some surreal shit. Like I never would have thought I'd be. Well, Chingo. yeah, because I met Chingo years ago and we exchanged phone numbers years ago, like in 2000. I had just come back from College Station, too. I was like new to Houston. So I was just like starting to go out to the clubs again because in College Station, it's different. You go to bars. Yeah. So you don't really do like the club thing. It's just so, Northgate, right? Yeah, just it's just North. Square. Yeah, it's just one, that one square. Exactly. So it was like and then it was like karaoke nights and then rob used to run through north gate you could tell 100 yeah. percent. so <laughs> it, that means, yeah exactly so night. there you go so <laughs> two stepping all night and you from richmond rosenberg yeah needville, yeah. needville. but needville is that vibe of college station yeah, yeah well, but, my, well college station might be a little bit now more uh like more bougie more bougie I'm not bougie on, but more I'm, like i'm tripping on how far he had to drive for some coochie that's what i'm <laughs> trying I, he, needville small ran the circle real quick <laughs> <laughs> Cause then you had to go past Houston <laughs> all the way to Bryan College. Uh, yeah, got so it. then I met him, and then we kind of exchanged phone numbers. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm sure he gives his number to everybody, so <laughs> I'm not worried about that phone number." Uh, I just kind of stuck it in my bag, and it was like, uh, "Okay." We'll, and I, we, and I we looked met- at hers, and I was like, <laughs> uh, mm, "Not right now. Uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna be able to do it right now." Yeah. But in terms of a surreal moment, sometimes we'll be like taking a walk around the block with the wagon and our kid is in it and it's like that's the shit that's like what the fuck this kid is here now she's got these teeth and her hair is long and she's like wanting to talk well i didn't think it was gonna go here i didn't think i was gonna marry this person if that's what you mean like i didn't think like when we were talking because it was kind of like because i'm not aggressive like that it was kind of like weird between us i too had just come out of a a long relationship (laughs) so it was weird between us was it not like you wouldn't hear from me. I wouldn't hear from you. And it was like, oh, what's up with you? I'm like, well, what's up with you? Like, I mean, we're neither one because like I hadn't been out of the game uh, or in the game. And I mean, I, my last relationship was for eight years. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Long I time. had not dated anybody else. I didn't know. What do you do? And I was definitely I've never been the one to either even before to like really text or, yeah. or you know, be all up on a guy, bitch, either you talk to me or you don't. <laughs> I mean, that's all <laughs> it is to it. <laughs> right. There's way other, like Ain't more th- thirst. <laughs> exactly. There's way more things in this world to do than to worry about one, one male, but um, you know, it worked out and hey. we're together now. Sound effects again. Yeah. Get the sound hey, effects again. good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Big boys, morning. neighborhood. <laughs> Yo, cowbell. Do, do you, uh, uh, do you still feel that same nervousness? when you first started stand up to like now like do you go on stage saying i got this shit it's a different nervousness so is it an excited nervousness it's almost like a focused <clears throat> nervousness it's almost like a checklist where i try to make 
<clears throat> I, so you got to remember too, like I had been going on stage in a different capacity for a long time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. even though I feel like I didn't really hone in the craft of performing music all the way. It still was practice enough to where I knew when it was a good show and when it was like, I felt like I didn't really connect, you know what I'm saying? Or I didn't really end it as good as I wanted to. And so just kind of having a little bit of that knowledge and then having confidence in your script and your act and then having confidence in your ability to not panic when it's silent or your ability to freestyle some shit if there's a heckler, all those little tools, you start to, you're still nervous a little bit, butterflies. But um, but you gotta fake it. <laughs> you have to like not show it as <laughs> much. Fun. I I got some uh, an interesting memory. Remember when you would perform, and I, I think uh, you had learned from the blues musicians, mm-hmm. and uh, and you used to say sometimes they would go up there and close their eyes oh. and do it. And I remember one time you used to go on stage, really, and then you'd perform and you'd close your eyes because you had sunglasses on, uh-huh. and then we you know it would be kind of like some of your best shows. Mm, and, uh, yeah. and 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 how does that tie into what you do now? Or? Now I can't close my eyes. <laughs> now I can't. W- the thought has crossed my mind about should I go up there with some shades and then roast myself after? Like, who am I kidding? <laughs> um, that's interesting. I think it was jazz yeah. or some shit I had heard about that. But um, or the similarities of because when you perform a song, you got to know the lyrics, you got to perform it, and and then with stand up, you got to know the words, you got to perform it. Is there like a like did do you did you learn something from music that you take into comedy in terms of being on stage like that? Uh, oh, that's yeah, a good question. Well, yeah, like good question, Frank. Well, some things from music would be like stage presence. You know what I'm saying? Like um, trying to command the stage a mm-hmm. little bit. And I remember some comics would tell me in the beginning, like in the very beginning, like, "Well, you already have stage presence, or you have decent yeah, stage yeah. presence, considering you're like super new." So it's almost like it doesn't match up. Like you don't have the material, <laughs> but you present. <laughs> he's like there he's he enjoying is. this bombing way too much yeah, yeah he's there but uh, <laughs> he's there he's a script uh, did the hat help you like when you used to wear the hat did that help you it made me sweat more <laughs> like it didn't no i see what you're saying because you know how um who was it was it seinfeld that says once he puts that jacket on he yeah. knows it's like it's a uh, time to like that mm-hmm. is his time so was your hat like your well it, almost like the superpower mm-hmm. like yeah. all the magic you hear all the sounds of magic and then you just become chingo which we talked about creating like a chingo superhero and we were brainstorming what chingo if, man what if he looks like chingo 1.0 and maybe he has to like run in i don't know if he's gonna run into a taco truck to change or some shit <laughs> oh that's funny i didn't think about but that. um like what would his superpower be but you're right that initial look like you gotta remember man i was just a dj i was just a broke college student that had no uh, was making no traction in the world of getting a real job with your degree mm-hmm. so you got all this student debt Poor um man. you're a schoolboy, like you're not a thug you're not a gangster all the raps all the rappers were claiming and trying to sell and portray the same thing everybody was trap trapper hella tattoos we do all the pills all the drugs all the syrup and it's like okay well what are you gonna say that's different and how are you gonna convincingly navigate these waters <laughs> rap about business <laughs> business or like you know what i'm saying business like class it's like shark infested waters yeah because mm-hmm. you got like people trying to sign you so you're having to juggle the business side mm-hmm. with the artistic side um but having that that like he said the shades and all that it does it, it was a um like a mask it was almost a little bit like a sec- not a sec- not a security blanket you know what i'm saying yeah. but like you're about to go on but you you wearing all your stuff you yeah, know you got like your little cushion. yeah you got all your little jewelry and stuff and because because hip hop a lot of times is a lot about um what's the word like peacocking or what's the word peacocking. like like you trying to Shine. like alpha mm. like you know on some like glow up you know what I'm saying like I some alpha saying. shit peacocking is yeah. the best term yeah, yeah so that you're able to fake the funk and confidently because think about it before Drake in hip hop a lot of people weren't emo. Before Drake was one of the first ones to not only could give some battle raps and some like little R and B singing, but he was like introspective and he was talking. He was giving you his complicated life and he yeah. was talking mm-hmm. about thoughts and emotions. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. before that, everybody was braggadocio, top down, say the, it ain't the roof down, the titties is out, you know, because <laughs> the drop the top on the coop. You know, that's in the next EP. What's going no, on? No, actually, Nas nah, said that. <laughs> Don't say I dropped the top. Shut say the titties is out. Uh, 
you know, it's all about the rims and, you know, Jay-Z, prime example, you know, it's all about the same drug dealing storytelling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so how were you able to navigate through that? Well, for one, like I said earlier, like I was just a college student. So I knew some people were going to try to like, you know, pull oh. your card. Like, ah, you say you're from the hood, but you went to college. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody's going to try to like expose yeah. you and try to be like, oh man, this dude, you know, he ain't hard. And it's like, bitch, I never said yeah, I was. Where they at now? Well, go ahead. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, you ever heard of Lil Dicky's professional rapper with Snoop Dogg? No. No. You ever heard it? Mm-hmm. Any of Lil Dicky fans? Oh, he's some, oh yeah, yeah, the video they did together. Yeah, it's it's funny because it's just about that. Like he, it's like I guess he gets signed by Snoop or whatever. But the the video is animated. It's like a cartoon, the entire mm-hmm. music video. And in the middle of it, Snoop's like, he's he's thug, you know, he's gangster. And he's like, what are you bringing to the table? And Lil Dicky's like, you're missing the angle. Like he's a comedic kind of rapper. Uh-huh. And the the story that he paints is brilliant. Mm, that's I kind of watch that. Yeah. But I, I want to make sure he answers that question because uh, I, I, I there's like a nugget in it that people don't know where he where he was so nervous his first show mm-hmm. that he threw up. I was about to throw it. I was like, <laughs> what, at the comedy show? No, no uh, as, first as, as uh, Chingo Chingo music. But so, so how were you? How did, so, did you know? All right, so this is what it was. I was um, college radio DJ. I was networking with local San Antonio uh, rappers like Fade Dog, Tone City Records, people like that. Mm. And I was, I was like, hey man, just trying to get in and like be a part of some shit and just like offer the services. Like, hey man, uh, I got an idea for a skit. Uh, you know, maybe when y'all are done with this song, maybe I could just jump in there and I could just kind of show you what the idea is and you can use it on your, your CD. And it'd be like, all right, man, yeah. what you got? And it'd be like, uh, I'll be like, I'm trying to sign you and this, this and that. Right. So they'd be like, oh, this guy's kind of, he's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I made the cut. I'm like, oh shit, I'm track seven. Uh, all, right? all right. And then somehow, some way it'd be like, Hey, we're going to have a show over here, blah, blah, blah. Let me talk to the promoter. Yo, you know, DJ biz from 917, the mm-hmm. college radio. Oh, the college radio. Okay. Well, he does this chingo bling thing oh, yeah. and he wants to do like five minutes or something. So it starts there. And then there okay, so the first show and you're how, talking about? Yeah, and how did you design the the the, I, the shorts, had, the boots and the hat? Well, I had zero budget. So <laughs> in the beginning I went to like a Goodwill or some shit like that to get yeah. the boots. I got the cowboy hat from Walmart <laughs> and then I had foil in the grill. <laughs> no. And there was probably no jewelry or like some really fucked up costume. No, it's fucked up. Co- it's no, like that, sterling silver because I have. That was not the beginning. That oh. was like, oh, bitch, I got a chain now <laughs> oh, yeah. with some cubic zirconias in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's pilver, but it looked like white gold. Pil- pilver. Yeah, it's like it's like platinum with a little bit of silver. <laughs> a little bit of platinum with some pilver. silver. <laughs> it's pilver. Um, so anyway, the show he's talking about where I was almost about to throw up. So somehow, some way, hey, man. They actually need a host for the, the my homeboy's throwing the show. It's in downtown San Antonio. So we leave in the South Side. <laughs> it's not, is it? it ain't in the South Side. <laughs> it's not at Arturo's ballroom. No, 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 no. It's downtown at a club. <gasps> a real club. <laughs> and they said SPM might show up. <gasps> SPM might show up. So I'm gonna be up there hosting and SPM's gonna be watching me host. So I'm like, shit. So Flatline, rest in peace, was there. He was on the lineup. And I remember us like parking somewhere and like walking to the venue. And as we're like walking down the sidewalk, <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, like, the fuck are you thinking, dude? <laughs> like, you have no um, business doing this. Like, you've never done this. SPM's going to be there. Um, and I'm just like, uh, like, just <laughs> like, like mom spaghetti with uh, eight mile. I was just like, uh, I, I can't do this. Uh, uh, How old are I'm, you? I was probably like 20. 20. 20 or 21 but you gotta remember i'm dressed like a fucking fool <laughs> nobody's been no who's gonna have these little boots and shorts and a cowboy hat and stuff mm-hmm. and you're gonna be up there trying to be funny and silly let's see how this goes so not a lot of people showed up thankfully and um uh, i just kind of winged it hey it's the way get the end of you know hey this guy reminds me of about the from over there at the flea market and, that, <laughs> that. and hey me not watch out hey Eat a chiquita. Look at my diamonds, you know, and then freestyle some shit about that. I know you think it looks like foil, but it's not. Da, 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 da. Supposedly, they were like, nah, SPM and his boy, they got into it with some cops outside. Uh-huh. And they, they talked, you know, they couldn't come in, but you did good, you know. <laughs> Here's and, five. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's five for your troubles. <laughs> uh, two for the bus. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he gave you some more foil. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I used to have to I used to have to roll with like 
oh, I got a show. Let me get a little square of foil. Keep it folded up <laughs> for, for showtime. And I already kind of just knew how to tear it. So it would be in. If you make it too small, it's not going to cover. It's not going to be wide enough he for the grill. Knows. He got a Look holster for his aluminum. <laughs> DIY. Babe, you should do a DIY. How to make a make a yeah, we used grill. to do that with bubble gum, with gum wrapper. Yeah. yeah. And I did it for a living. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 just, and also to bring up something funny is that he ultimately got on a song about some grills. Oh, yeah. It's like, that's my then, favorite song. By then, I had a real grill. Yeah. No, that's wild, my, though. I've told I the remember, story. Yeah, yeah it's, that's my favorite song. By I, then, we had yeah. shit, we had, it was, the show was on, like, we were moving. Uh, like, my sister was, like, you know, momager, right-hand woman, accountant, like, making sure that at the end of the day, like, mijo, I'm, I'm putting, you know, I got you on a budget, <laughs> but you're going to have your down payment for your house. And before you know it, it's like, Hey, he's playing around, but he's buying a house, mm-hmm. and and there's a bunch of T-shirts, and like the people, the kids really like his CDs, and like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, people dressing like you for Halloween, and hey, he's about to buy another house, you know what I'm saying? Like, thanks to the help and the team and the staff that we had, and um, mm-hmm. and then uh, then I got tired of being on a budget, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> man, he ain't bought a house in a minute, <laughs> you know, but he he do got a nice car though, and, you know, he does party a lot. He, he I see he got new jewelry, um. So yeah, there's a lot of learning. And and to, uh, also to bring up a, a memory, like I remember, like I had, I think it was about 2007, I would say, 2008. I remember, uh, well, I had I had met him, right? But just to go to the to the memory, I remember, like it, it was just a crazy because you you gotta see it to understand. I remember uh, we'd be in Laredo when uh, then we walked into a mall. I'm talking about just walking in there. And, and then he's got the the whole thing on, and all of a sudden, like people are running. It's the up waking to him. is like. I'm talking about, yeah. Like how these little rappers dress now, where it's like, who is this? Okay, let me guess. Now it's like face tats. You know, you're on pills. Oh my god! Good Imagine thing you weren't if you would have done that. Yeah, generation. Good thing oh I was. Oh my god! Oh man! Your sisters would have killed you anyway, so it's a good one thing. One time, one time I did a prank. I think. Um, I was getting an actual tattoo. I was like in Indiana, uh, <laughs> hanging out with uh, Pac out there in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. And homeboys tatting my chest. I'm like, hey, I want to do a prank. And uh, we made it look like I was getting a face tat. Oh, and yeah. then I posted it. And everybody from like <laughs> Gina Rodriguez to like uh, my family, like I think my sister called like, what are you doing? They just thought like mental health, <laughs> like, oh. intervention. He's losing it. He's getting face tats now. But that walking around the mall shit, I always tell Marisol, I was like, back before we had Facebook ads and and YouTube ads or Google ads, and it's like, this was, like, if you have a show that night or the night after or whatever, it's like, yeah. you better walk around the mall. Because <laughs> that's, it's like, where are the people at? They're yeah. at the flea market, they're at the mall. Walk around, you already look crazy. A couple people might stare because they're like, who in their right mind would dress like that? <laughs> and then a couple people might recognize you. Those three people might want a photo, which leads to the other three nosy people like, well, fuck, let me get one just in case. (laughs) Before you know it, you got a nice little commotion going. And now they're like, oh, I think there's a show in town tonight. Mm -hmm. And that's what the shit you had to do back before there was like Instagram. Running ads. (laughs) Yeah. And and, and just to like add more detail, like I'm talking about he got swarmed. I'm talking about And he got kicked out of the mall, right? Well, we got kicked out of the mall in Bradenton, Florida one time. (sighs) Yeah, I think that's what it was. But but definitely we had they kicked us out because he was stopping too much shit. Going that's on. hilarious. And uh, Frank, let, can you? So everybody's listening. If you saw the Dragon Ball Z, if you saw the Toy Story, the way those clips came about is we would literally be like young, starving artists hanging out. Like uh, it'd either be at Frank's house or it'd be like at my house or something, and uh, or like one of like the studios or some shit. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and real quick, I'm just going to set it up. And we'd be like, we weren't speaking in terms of, hey, man, we got to make content to engage. It wasn't that. It was just like, hey, man, this music shit is crazy. Um, I don't know. And then the idea. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a funny story that, that, I, that I've told before, and I, I think it's got to be told. It's, it's, a, it's a great story. Um, so uh, the Toy Story skit. Uh, so a lot of people don't know that it almost didn't happen. Uh, and, and the reason I say is because, you know, of course, he said, we just jump into it. We don't plan it. It's just like, all right, pull up a clip. And and at that time, I was amazed as hell. I'm like, how the fuck is he? How do we freestyle? How is he shit? talking? Just freestyle all these fucking voices and they look like they go. You know, and that was at the time I didn't see a lot of voiceovers. So I'm like amazed as fuck. I'm like, God damn. But um, 
So we ended up doing the Toy Story skit, and it was a scene where it was the aliens in the vending machine, mm -hmm. the claw. Uh-huh. And, and and he kept trying it over and over and over and over and over. It just wasn't going. Yeah. And then they got, you know, frustrated. And then uh, they were like, all right, man, you know, we're, we're just going to head out. And they were heading out. And it, while they were heading out, I was pulling up another clip where it was Toy Story. I mean, uh, it was Buzz and Woody, right? Mm -hmm. And then I pull it up. And then I'm like, yo, let's try it one more time. Yeah, yeah. One more time. Let's try it with this clip. Maybe it's the clip. And pull it up. I'm talking about first take. Yeah, it was, that's me, how it goes yeah. down. Me and your cousin Willie. Yeah, and it, uh, it, well, it, he, yeah. It, it, it and uh, I'm talking about like I I didn't even have to edit it. So what you're watching is like not even editing. Was that one take? It was one take. Wow. Mm. And and so I you know and I thought it was funny and the whole reason we were doing it was because we were doing it on chingobling.com as a splash. Yes, uh, a as splash a splash page. So when you'd arrive at my website, this <laughs> thing would start playing just to kind of like fuck with people, right? Be yeah. disruptive. Yeah. Somebody ripped it Somebody ripped with a flash it. player rip or some screen grab and they uploaded it to YouTube. YouTube and, and, it, and so this motherfucker had more vision than me. That's fine. Whoever this kid was, I started rest in peace, Brian. I started suspecting it was Brian. Yeah. Because because the YouTube page that it was on, it just sounded like a username that he would have came up with. It, yeah. it went super viral. I'm talking about like And then I had to grab it and like, well fuck, I need this on my channel too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go ahead no i i guess i just you know I, it went viral multi-million views if you go on the right now i think it's at like it i think it was like 16 million or something i was gonna something. say one so actually i forgot we did the first toy story again for igtv you know like formatted for that and i have the second part and the two drag mall z ones that oh, i haven't perfect. even sent you yet that are, that are oh ready to i go. need that yeah and uh i actually when i went to get it and i typed it in i figured yours would pop up first but the other one popped yeah. up yeah. first oh, so that's wow. where i ripped it from i was like that's Crazy. funny but and I'm, there's the story but i'm pretty sure that the the disney uh encoding algorithm thing i'm sure youtube picked up this is toy story mm -hmm. and Something. and i probably got an email by the way i got, we got a strike yeah huh we got a strike on youtube yeah, you saw because yeah. rogan did too for the fucking violence oh okay so look uh we, we've we been violence? doing just violence oh, oh rob wow. rob had this idea of theo juventino doing uh reactions to like hood oh, fights flag. and the community guidelines on youtube say we don't like putas <laughs> <laughs> even though youtube is full of putas full of yeah um, and they're full of a lot of alt-right stuff and a lot of other crazy things that because of the algorithm, if you start looking up some shit like that, it'll start to like really draw you in to where that's all you're seeing. Yeah. I'm sure we could appeal it though, because it's just, you're just doing, it was already an existing video. It's not like you created the video. Maybe, but maybe they feel like, oh, well, now you instigating the fight. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or something. Speaking of posts and videos, yesterday I sent you guys an interesting post. Oh yeah. Um, the tube. So... It's uh, I follow this birthing account, right? And so you have to show Frank the photo. So oh, I need to show you. Yes. Yeah, I need Some to show birth, Frank birthing. That way birth, he can speak first, birth, and birth. if he says something fucked up, I can follow up. Yeah, birthing. Frank will say the fucked up shit. Yeah. <laughs> so let me show it to you, Frank, so that you can. Uh, in the hood, when we talk about birthing, <laughs> usually yeah. it's me as this something. In the hood, birthing ain't even that popular. <laughs> In the hood, we'd be like, man, I, don't, I ain't never even been at a birth. I never had a birth. So fuck birth. A birth. What? What did I say? No, nah, I'm just clowning. Oh. How he was like, not a birth, yeah, like a birth, like a Got baby it. having a birth. I'm like, I ain't never been to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I never go see no birth. So swipe. Yeah, peep it. What the? Re there you go. What the? This man laid out. <laughs> <laughs> this man got a vagina. What got a, <laughs> a beard light? and a vagina? What got a Miller light belly? S pregnant belly. So, so you want to say So it basically, what it is is I follow this this birthing account, right? And so they posted this couple. It looked like right? he had a long day. He's got the, the blindfold. It's oh, yeah. two. M Physically, it looks like two men, right? But one of the men. Or right here, it looks like man, a dude taking a shit. 100%. The man yeah, looks, looks, looks like Burt Kreischer taking a dump. Well, that's. What, She's. Yeah. That's what she. I had to do. And. Oh. I just really. Well. I sat on the toilet. They like make that you to do all kinds of, kind of things to push. Unless you have a hospital birth, it's just one, lay down, don't move, yeah. stay on your back. So I went, uh. I did back and forth. And, mm. and anyway, help? set it up. So, yeah. So, anyway, so <laughs> I clicked on it because I was like, oh, wow, what I, is this? Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to talk about maybe he had some kind of like, some kind of like something happened, you know? Yes. To, like, I don't know really <laughs> what it was. Well, then it, it goes on to, so it's a, a female who's transitioning into a male. A male. Uh -huh. So, 
still has the organs and everything of a female. Right. Still right? has eggs, and but vagina. physically she's transforming into a male. So she's but got it looks the beard like it and, looks. Or, so he's got the beard and mm-hmm. the, uh, and you know. Yeah. So now she looks like a barista named Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> barista. Yeah. Like. Uh, yeah. Oh, so who does that look like? Who Who would you say this? Definitely she, Kevin. Like no no no, but like like there's a comedian or somebody. This person looks like yeah, a beard. Right. Uh, what do you I call couldn't. them glasses? Uh, Drew Carey glasses? Yeah, yeah, like Drew Carey's nephew. But anyway, go on. So anyway, so yeah, it's a pregnant man, I guess, right? Essence, Technically? kind of. Sure. So basically, I guess, biologically, genetically, it, it's still a woman giving birth. Uh-huh. But it, it just fucks with your mind because as you could zoom in, she had the uh, breast removed, mm-hmm. right? right? That's usually when, when women are trans, transgender into a man. They usually have the breast removed and they put them on a lot of testosterone. Right. I'm assuming that's probably going to be the main hormone. Yeah. Estrogen well, blocker. T- mm-hmm. So what we were tripping on is if you're on estrogen blockers and they pumping you up with testosterone to now you look like Kevin and now you got a beard, hairy chest, yeah. by the way. Oh. Um, uh, no man. How does, how does that? Yeah. How does that? <laughs> how does, that is what? It's trippy because it's a woman at the bottom. How? Ladies. How? How does all, how do all those hormones still allow for natural birth? Like if you're on testosterone, how does your body still? And she or he, uh, because he's obviously wanting to be a man. I'm going to say he, yeah. but it's really the sh- the fe- the females. Hey, the we're trying to be that PC because it's still a woman giving birth. It, it is a woman giving birth who's trans- transgender transitioning or transitioning sh- into male. Sure, guys. Well, okay. we're trying to explain like basically yeah. the mama, even though it looks like two papas. Right. We're right. just yeah. gonna call this one mama papa. Yeah. Sure. So <laughs> mama papa. Mama papa. <laughs> right. My thing is what mama papa is. She still had a natural home birth. Mm-hmm. She didn't go to the hospital. So I guess mama home mama papa like really in her heart felt like she still wanted to have a home birth right yeah so yeah and and on top of that it's kind of like does it make her partner gay or does it make him heterosexual he's still getting coochie <laughs> he getting coochie from a dude i love where this is going right so, so I, I mean, I mean I, i'm curious right so what is that how does that so if so if Physically, I look like a man, but I still have a female part. We are having sex like heterosexuals do. Mm-hmm. So, does, yeah. so does that make the the other guy gay or does he make it straight because he's still doing... Here's the better question. Spectrum. If you run into a really hot chick who you then find out has a dick and she blows you, does that make you gay? Nah. <laughs> it thought it was a chick. <laughs> then that answers our question. It thought it was a chick with big hands and like a like a really strong jawline. No, I mean some guys nowadays that are doing this whole look better than a lot of females. So oh, like Kylie's I mean like makeup? Kylie's makeup artist. Shh. After this, you gotta show Frank Kylie's makeup artist. You know, and, and I and I'll say um what is his name, man? Um, uh, the, the most famous guy, the uh, Kardashian uh, makeup guy. guy. Oh. Uh, the makeup guy. There's a makeup guy. Is it James, James something. James, James. Yeah. No. Um, the one that has a Mac deal, the deal with makeup companies. Yeah, that was the same What's guy. Yeah. Name, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Star. Star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't, I don't know, right? Uh, but you know, s- some of them <laughs> people got skills. You know, uh, you know that they're uh, Jeffrey Star is about to like compete with the. Uh, Kendall Jenner. Or yeah, I know. Oh, Kylie. He's like, yeah, like, yeah she's he's on he, top. He's, he's a, like making it. Like he's got brushes. I was telling you, he even brought out um the metal straws. Remember, I was telling you, I was watching. I was like, this guy's doing it. I mean, yeah. he's in the Morph store. He or Morph, however you pronounce, Morphe, however you pronounce it. I wonder how the females that are in the makeup business, if they feel like fuck, yet another male trying to enter our space and try mm-hmm. to run shit. Oh, like in other words. It probably already is a male dominated industry, like the people who own makeup companies. Mm-hmm. The manufacturers. But now you have a whole display with a whole bunch of product lines from a dude selling makeup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see a lot of influencers online. I, you know, I, I don't know, you know. There's a lot of but, makeup. But I people. do see it. And, and well, going to up. that about a one, you're wondering, go, I'm, I'm going another direction here, but you know how you're saying, like, you wonder if these females are like, what the fuck? Another male coming mm-hmm. into. Yeah, yeah. A, well, how do you feel about it? I mean, she I thinks don't really he's care. fabulous. Like, now, how I, do you I feel about him. a male dominating a female makeup world? That's just mean as a female. You just gotta 
That's just the hey, market. The market that just, responding. That just lets you know the you power gotta work, of makeup. You got to work harder. You know That's what I'm saying? That's the power you of you makeup. You got to work harder. But what I'm getting at is yesterday I was listening to a podcast that my girlfriend sent me. And uh, actually, we this girl went to high school with us and she was, um, she was a guest on this podcast, right? And basically... What this girl does is she only um, interviews female entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. And so her thing is called uh, Project Mockingbird. And what she does is she tries to explain to females like, hey, the same way males go and play golf together, females need to go play or do whatever to network and talk about business oh, to help each other because they as males help each other and hey dude let me connect you i got this guy who can work it out blah 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 mm -hmm. but they're out playing golf Golfing. or they're doing whatever you know what i'm saying whatever yeah. it is that's you know males like do to network sure. right mm -hmm. versus or go to a game right mm -hmm. like i know that when my aunt had her strip business club. they used to oh, strip club right they used to buy season tickets to like the texans or the rockets whatever and then the doctors that they had under contract they'd give them free mm. you know to keep the network and the relationship going i mean you know about mm. all oh, that yeah, stuff yeah sure. so she was like that's so her her seminars are about women needing to learn how to network and not network as in let me go to this mixer and have a drink what do you do here's my business card no yeah. like legit say let me connect you because this is what we're doing and so she talks about some of her clients that she has on it's not like she has a huge following but she's been in business for a while she quit her corporate america job to start this this agency it's she's been in business for five years it's gone well she went from a staff of one working out of her house to a staff of seven now seven females that help support this so going to that it's like it's about if you're afraid of a man coming into a female yeah. industry it looks like as females we just need to work better and harder and support each other legit not support fake we're mm -hmm. we're supporting each other and then we turn around like see what that mm -hmm. bitch trying to do come on now <laughs> she you know no like legit support and you know network and connect and really make it an effort to like help other you know females if that's what you want to do if you really are about like that life Mm -hmm. legit support don't legit support and then go off and talk about how you know i just met frank yesterday for the first time like obviously we, i've heard of you for, for a while now and uh, immediately we started talking about business and he, he brings up kevin o'leary he's like oh mr wonderful he's like that's his favorite person and somehow we started talking about you said women are the what, 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 did, what did you say yeah, i was about to say that uh so my hero is kevin o'leary from shark tank the ball headed guy mm -hmm. um but uh a lot of the ventures that he's a part of like they're, they're all like ran by females and like he says, uh, and I, you know, he says that all the ventures that he has with females, they all like paid the money back and they're profitable um, more than, you know, the male, the males. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he says, you know, the future is female. They said, uh, he said it, he said, if you want something done, uh, if he said, if you want something done, give it to a uh, single mother. I'm like, he crazy. But but he mm -hmm. said that you know the stats prove <laughs> so that's your favorite. Yeah, right. it's my slogan now. No, hey man, <laughs> hey man, check this I'm out. I'm quoting him. He said it. He pulled it to the corner. Say, little mama, I see you hurting your feet. <laughs> but like Kevin O'Leary <laughs> say, you want something done right, give it to a single female. So, so is you is or is you ain't. <laughs> so I'm here to give you this uh, presentation. Check this out, baby. <laughs> you know you need new Pitch management. To her. Uh, but I will say that a lot. Like of you up here stripping for what? <laughs> for what? <laughs> for what? <laughs> I, I will say a lot of people uh, probably don't know, but you know there's a, a lot of um, uh, a lot of grants out there for female businesses. Mm -hmm. So if you're a female, you're starting a business. There's a lot more mm -hmm. money out there right now for. For uh, female-owned businesses, they actually have a, a thing. I, th I think they have it's women-owned business, some some kind of like organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if you want to, you know, get into business and you're a, you're a female, mm -hmm. the time is right. That's now. something like a mixer type of thing that I would like to do on a lower, on a smaller scale. I don't know about no seminar just yet, but mm -hmm. I would only want um, for people to come, like panel of speakers who can legit do something for the women who are going to attend. Don't come if you're just going to explain something to them because we have the internet and we have YouTube. Mm. There's Google. There's there's resources out there if you want to do the research yourself. However, you go there's so many seminars uh, seminars out there that'll give you the information but then you're back to square one because what do you do with the mm -hmm. information if you're not actually i'm not saying hold her hand and instruct them how to do it but legit give them like some resources like tell them that me myself marisol sent you and she's going to help you you know get your stuff in order set up your llc you know what i'm saying whatever the case may mm -hmm. be you know would, would but you? legit give that 
like real yeah. information like start ha- a panel of women up there speaking is great mm-hmm. you're charging five hundred dollars a head for these vip tickets at these Dang. seminars Ooh, right i'm in the, for some. I'm yeah. in the wrong I them. yes yeah. no, so true. they're charging I'm in the wrong business <laughs> right because i wanted to attend one yeah in la when we were out there and i was like what i'm not paying this to attend like she knew, she didn't even at, she, at that point she was like yeah I'm a veto of this yeah myself. I'm not like you know I was like in a time like hey can you watch the girls so that I can go attend yeah. this and then I saw the prize and I was like Ooh. wait no because okay so let me not be lazy then so because it tells you what they're gonna talk about right yeah. so okay so let me go ahead and take Google. those points mm-hmm. and I'm gonna go get on Google and research it myself because there's maybe there are single mothers right who are trying to figure out how to make some extra change. Mm-hmm. Well, do you think that they have extra $500 just laying around to go to your seminar that all you're going to do is give her paperwork and a, a, what is it, What are those, those uh, grab bags or whatever yeah. they are they with, sell you packages. Yeah. With yeah. they're yeah. all the, all the, um, you know, people who sponsor them give you free shit for you to take, which is a great perk, right? Cause yeah. you get to take all this stuff home. That's great. And but then that plastic ends up in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> but, and then what do you, turtles. and then what do you do with those? Oh, you admire these women, man. I can't, believe she started blah 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 business that's amazing so i get the motivation right because i try to do that on tip tuesdays you know i try to push that motivation onto females like you can do anything you want to do if you really set your mind to it Mm -hmm. and and it and it may take you five years ten years whatever however long it's going to take but if you do it yourself and you do the research Mm -hmm. and you network and you go out there then it's kind of like way more rewarding it is I don't but know. let me ask you this let me ask you this first frank have you ever gone to one of those to an actual conference and bought something because when you go to those they're selling something yeah. of oh, course really? they're selling you oh, uh, something know. you could take right mm-hmm. have you bought actually invested in that because that's what a lot of people don't do they go to these things like i've been to some of these and then the people that don't buy that's what you're getting out of that event people that do buy you're getting the the, the, the seminar plus the course that they're selling or mm. the classes that they're going to have Got later it. on but those that just go and they get the bleacher seats and they don't invest in anything then you're just not going to take anything away from it yeah mm. yeah uh, i mean uh, i'll give a quick shout out to jane empowers uh her, her program uh, programs man so, info uh, products are the most and you probably know this as well it's it's like the most lucrative business in the world info yeah products. i'll tell you what i saw uh again shout out to jane empowers uh what is it uh uh, was it speak with uh, speak with authority and sell with confidence? Ah, nice. Mm. Shout Slogans. out to Tony Kaufman too. Uh, but um, <laughs> what, what I saw Shout was out shout out podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I saw is um, they there's these women right, and then for example Jane Empowers, you know, what I'm saying? she <laughs> she teaches them how to speak because um, you know getting in front of people and speaking because for example if you're trying to be like a CEO of a company you're the face of it or you know sure you, mm-hmm. you should be right. And you should know how to talk to people, especially mm-hmm. if you're on camera. And, you, you know, you should know what your bad things, your habits and all that. And so what she does is she trains them and teaches them how to speak. And then while you're there, like all the other vendors, the booths are. There. So if you need like videos or if you need like another woman that does some kind of print work mm-hmm. or another lady that has like her own little mm-hmm. TV network mm-hmm. thing. And, and so it's it's like a like a little community mm-hmm. and they all pay each other. And, and it's like... Um, um, and they ultimately become successful. They go on to do their own conferences. That's, all, that's great. See, that's the, when you can give, provide good information. And 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 uh, not saying that my tip Tuesday is the fucking the shit, yeah, out here or anything like that. But whatever I know, I seriously do try to like yeah. spread it to whoever is following me or on my YouTube. I really try to like listen, females smarten up because there's no reason for us to feel less than a man because. We can do a lot more than a man. No offense to all the three gentlemen Shout sitting here, O'Leary. you know. But um, <laughs> Shout out, I mean, uh, no disrespect to the mama papa. <laughs> She's like, we could grow a beard and and, and get birth and run it and run it. So yeah, so I'm kind of I'm kind of weird about those things. Like I, I've always like I've wanted to have some kind of mix. I mean, I've talked yeah, to you sure. plenty of times about it. But I want it to be super, now. right? Mm-hmm. I want it to be super in, informative and like really beneficial to where these fem- the females leave there, not with a grab bag of goodies, yeah. but rather mm-hmm. a grab bag full of 
oh fuck when full i get game. back shit i'm it's I got it. a bag full of game i got some work to do you know what i'm saying Actionable I got, stuff exactly they can do. and your tip tuesdays and the stuff you do is that's the catalyst to it so that's already setting up all the free content you're giving them is setting it up for the actual event that you mm. do host people are going to want to go she's like she's been giving us free information for you know five years or a decade or whatever or a year yeah i'm gonna go to her mixer yeah, yeah you so. know the good thing about you though uh, is that if you were to do an event like that, you can do like, um, it's like, it could be, you know, financial, it could be wellness, mm-hmm. uh, it could be business, mm-hmm. and you could put it on the podcast. Yeah, because influential. And female it. empowerment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And empowerment. We're gonna and have Mama Papa on there, yeah. <laughs> Mama Papa on there. I am gonna have Mama Papa because oh. I want her. I want. I want <laughs> someone like to explain that to me. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I was just tripping. Like the first photo. Look, pull up the photo real quick, and then I, I have a question for Frank. <laughs> it went to the camera. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, props to this couple for you know having a baby. Okay. Cool. Um, this photo. You know, because you can't tell it used to be a woman and you can't tell it's a pregnant belly. Mm-hmm. It looks like a dude with a big ass beer belly. And there's sure. men, plenty of men that she look like that, too. Little... Yeah, it looks yeah, it I... looks like Burt Kreischer. <laughs> and then you swipe and it's like, oh, that's a baby in there. Yeah. Can and I see you can it? swipe it. 100 percent. 200 percent right there. <laughs> And then, what oh, the, what is that going to YouTube uh, got, guidelines? Yeah, I know, right? The bush. It got white real. White Claw. White Claw. White Claw. <laughs> now it's like the Taco Bell. Right Shout there. out to White Claw. <laughs> Dude, they just came out with a four loco version of that, yeah. like uh, White Claw drink or whatever. Which White Claw? I'm, I, I don't need, I, I don't drink it, but I know people like it. Oh, I don't yeah. know what okay. it is. What is it's it? It's like a, a it's like a seltzery, alcoholic, girly kind of drink. Ah. Oh. So hey, you y- have it. yesterday, yesterday you brought up the term personal steak. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what do you, what is that? So, um, b- based on human behavior and in business and in different industries, uh, what were, because I was around some financial shit and, you know, I learned how to create business models and shit. Uh, what successful people do is they create like, uh, and I'm sorry for them big ass words. Um, I ain't heard no create- one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. You know, uh, successful. I'm gonna let <laughs> y'all like digest them model. syllables. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, uh, so, uh, what business, they, they design uh, <laughs> business models around like human behavior. Uh, and, uh, and, and if you want, um, if you want people to care, have personal stake in something or want something to win, you know, they, they got to have uh, either personal stake or financial stake in it. Uh, and so, uh, and so this is something that I explained to like artists and shit like that is that, um, I guess in my case to use myself as, as an example and how I used it is, um, a lot of the times I'll post stuff and I'll share like personal things that I'll probably, you know, some adversity that I've gone through. And then uh, my slogan is keep winning or I'll always, you know, post stuff to, to kind of like, you know, motivate and shit like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry for not talking in the mic. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. so I remember my first podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so like, um, like, you know even, what I, you over here, <laughs> you over here with? I, I, I guess. And, and it even um, and I think it's another reason why, like I wear a suit now. It's almost to to show you the image. The So if you were to see a picture like from way back, you're like, OK, look at this motherfuckers. I'm, Air Force Ones and, and doing this Baggy. whatever it was because I started off whatever as an artist. Whatever it was, dude. Was like, whatever it Actually, is. I started off as an artist and I, I got discovered by Chingo Bloom, you know what I'm by saying? the way. Not a lot of people know that shit. <laughs> I'm talking about. In a, in a parking lot. And so to see me from then. Oh, yeah. I want to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> to, to see me from then, to see the images and, and then to see, okay, then the video thing and then this new thing. And so um, I think people that have followed me for a long time and, and that have seen me kind of evolve you know, because a lot of people, they fear change or they fear like evolving or like taking a chance or a risk going to the next thing. Because uh, I think for the past two, three years, uh, I, I stopped doing music videos. Mm. And, and it was because, you know, uh, and uh, along on that journey, I learned what my passion is in this business. Mm. Right. And so I guess it almost got to the point where I was like, you know, I built this. I want to do something else. Mm-hmm. The more I keep, you know, it's like playing with the same yeah. toys over and over and over and over and over. You're like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. But I need to, yeah, I need to yeah. step my toy game up, right? Yeah. But uh, um, so I guess people that have followed me for a long time, they almost feel like, man, I watched them grow up. Mm-hmm. So there's personal mm-hmm. stake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, like he's, you know, becoming something and I'm watching it. And so, uh, and so that kind of creates personal stake to where people are like, oh, shit, he's doing good it's like from, i want him to win we went from air, air force ones to aldo's <laughs> to the suits hell yeah aldo's was like oh, the, aldo shoes was like the transition like okay <laughs> ain't air force ones now see you got the aldo's brother mm-hmm. you know what uh was set off uh uh the, the one thing that set something off in my brain 
is when I started getting hired uh, to cover these technology events mm-hmm. and I'm around these people uh, and and to be around it. Like I'm talking about, I went to San Francisco. I'm talking about, I went to where like Facebook is at. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and uh, we did a, an event at IBM. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm in IBM, mm-hmm. like in the building, like talking to these people. I'm like, I can't even believe this shit. But uh, one thing that I didn't see, I didn't see anybody, not one person that looked like me at all. Wow. Mm. I'm talking about walking around the building. I'm talking about going around mm. the city. You walk into, you know, the, these offices and you don't see anybody, nobody with no taper. Yeah, we talk about, me and my soul talk about sometimes too, about, you know, and you're, what you do, like you don't see a lot of Latina, you mm-hmm. know, influencers doing specific things like you're doing. Like you're not just putting out the makeup tutorial. You're not yeah. just putting out the other stuff. Like in the same thing, we talked about financial uh, literacy not too long ago, all of us. Like there's not a lot of YouTubers that are, Wow, what's my, that? My music just <laughs> it's the feds. Oh, I was like, what the fuck? It's feds, well, hey, feds did not like that. All right, all right, all right. Man. <laughs> so, that was scary. <laughs> yeah, right? Feds watching. I was like, do I need to leave now? <laughs> Luminati's like, like, you better not it's like, set it off out here. We heard what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, once I seen that, I said, man, I got to fill in the blanks. You know, um... And so uh, it's almost like, um, and I even look around at people's like kids or even their parents. Some 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 parents are scared of technology. They're like, no, nah, I'm not about to. But like seeing what I what I seen is like, no, this is gonna happen with you, without you, with yeah. your permission, without it, it's gonna happen. And so uh, you know, it's one of those things where you know I always want to set off a chain reaction, mm-hmm. like you know, because I even spoken to like uh, Juan, Captain's brother. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Juan. You know, what I'm saying CEO, follow that boy. <laughs> 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 CEO. You know, he's Follow like, that boy. He's Shout like, out it's, to it's everyone. good to like see a presentation like that to see yourself like, okay, we can be something like uh, other than you know rappers and shit like that and face tattoos and chains and shit. It could be something else. Uh, and uh, you know, I think if I would have seen that growing up, like, oh damn, that boy got a tape. It looks like me. Yeah. So yeah. And then these people are like, you know, I'm like, shit. I don't know what he's doing, but it looks like better than what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, <laughs> well, you've come a long way. I remember you used to have that big. Big ass camera. Oh hell! And he used to have it on his lap. We'd have like a road trip. He'd be in the back seat, sleep with the big ass camera. <laughs> and then like, you were filming something for like a model or some type of photo shoot, and it like fell off the tripod and like broke. Nah, I'll <laughs> tell you the real funny story. Okay. It happened right in front of you. Okay. Uh, we were in stage, I think in Brownsville or something. Oh, when you fell? <laughs> yeah. He like was filming <laughs> on stage. And I'm, th- I'm up there, and then okay, so Frank's <laughs> filming, and then next thing you know. Frank ain't there no more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 10 foot stage. Yo, I think shit. Frankie J was a headliner and he's wow. like looking like, oh shit. <laughs> and he like fucked up his elbow. <laughs> oh my Ouch. God. Yeah. Yeah, like it was funny because at that time, like I had just started this filming thing. Like, like I said, I, you know, I, I would play with the camera thing and, 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 you know, I met him. Well, really, you were rapping and then the camera thing was. I rap, so I I should probably learn how Catch to shoot a video content or something mm. for DVDs. And, and then stuff. I was like, "Hey man, uh, your raps are cool, but the video uh, is kind of cool, decent." <laughs> so I was like, "A lot of people need videos. Have you ever thought about like exploring that avenue? Because mm-hmm. I feel like there's a demand for he did tell because me that. YouTube was new, and it's like there's a demand for like low budget." Uh, convincing videos Mm -hmm. and i was like if you could learn how to work like on a small crew with a small budget you could probably have a lot of and you probably worked yourself to the bone too because he was like constantly editing and (laughs) i'm on my way to dallas to shoot another one and then they fly me to chicago and then michigan and then i'm over here in atlanta and then i'm back home and i'm still editing all the videos well what it what it it was is um you know he he had told me uh and i'll wrap it yeah yeah, my bad he had told me uh, i said hey man uh you know you got the football he's like all you got to do is run that football to the touchdown and, and then I was like, I was like, this is a play. I was like, this All is right. a possible play. Yeah. You don't have to take this particular play, but if it is a play and I could definitely see it playing out. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it Wise worked. Words. But, uh, but if I had never met him, if I had never, uh, I guess if he had never said that, I probably would have never did music videos. It was funny because at the time I, I felt it was kind of corny, to be honest with you. I was like, I'm not about to follow nobody with no camera. Yeah. Mm. Like, what I look like, a camera? I'm a boss. Meanwhile, now everybody's yeah. following themselves around. Fuck with I camera. look like. Know, right? Fuck and, I look like and, <laughs> with a camera. And and, and, uh, and it ended up working. Uh, and, and that's why I don't remember the podcast yeah. thing. I yep. was like, fuck that. It yeah. Was he was like so reluctant. Even at it. first, he was like, fuck Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> and then he heard his concept. He's like, and he bought the same suit he wears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, All right, guys. Yeah, so, well, yeah. I got to run. Pick up the little one. Got to go pick up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in so much. Frank Lopez by Compound Films. Bye. I wanted to ask you about the CBD stuff you have going on with Crew Bob. Uh, that'll have to be for next time. Next time. He'll be on here. Yeah, we, we'll have Crew Bob back on, and they have a CBD thing going. Put him in a headlock. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're headed to a city near you. Make sure you check out ChingoBling.com. And, of course, my, my lovely wife and I, we're trying to step up our YouTube game. So make yeah, sure you so follow sure you my subscribe. baby's YouTube. Yeah, thank you. Bang. Sass.